Hi, Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Um, back again for the third, I believe, episode in our steampunk rainbow springs and keys and skulls and flowers and whatever collage on my picture frame. Um, we'll we'll settle on a name eventually. But um, all those things are involved in a 3D collage. Um, now, we've worked on the base a little bit. We've worked on inking up our uh, metal pieces. I don't do the backs of them because they're going to be stuck down anyway. So, um, And I've done a few more pieces might help if I take them off of the, the tinfoil background so that you can actually see them better um, and I'm particularly um, pleased with my skulls get all oh, they they properly get you in focus oh yes a very creepy skull. I'm holding my hand still. All good. You can see my lifeline there. <laughs> the wrinkles. Yeah. So he, he looks a little bit sinister. But I'm really pleased how they've come out. And I've done a, a few other bits and pieces I found knocking around. Um, I've also been gifted these lovely jubbly jubbly jubblies. Um, and I'm thinking that they may, may make a nice edging border. Just to work that in. Not necessarily all the way around, if we have enough. We're one short, but I'm sure we can find something. But it will stretch, um, so we might be able to uh, do something about that. I'm not sure how much tension you need to keep it under to keep it stretched. But we, we can work on that. So that's a thought for the border. But my first idea for the border was to use my lolly sticks. Overstretch them and deform them. If I overstretch them, I can deform them. Yeah, most people do get deformed if they're overstretched. So I can understand that. Ooh, right. So the thought was with the lolly sticks was one long one, one short one, one long one, one short one and so on and so forth and they would pick up the colours going round from the uh, from the collage but I could have the thinking out loud now I could have the coils on the side and maybe the lolly sticks around the outside edge. That's another thing. Um, if you put your suggestions forward in the comments, I appreciate that. Um, so we, we've got options, guys. We've got options and we've got plenty to play with. So moving on, after me waffling for 10 minutes. Um, today we're going to work on our cog flowers so I've done this one to give you an idea this is the all blue one because it was blue on the top and we did all blues underneath everything now my little pink has got a bit of blue coming through but I don't mind that because it gives it a bit more substance a bit, bit more interest and the same with my my light purple it's got a bit of blue grunge coming through just adds marbled effect, yeah. 
next episode we're going to work on getting these um, not die cut um, embossed that's the word <laughs> I knew it would get to me in the end um, I've done a template for the bigger ones which matches this one and I started a template for the little ones but I thought you could join me in making this template so you know what I've done so in a I can't remember if it was last time or the time before we did the folds in our circle now if you carry on and do to the eight so you've got eight quarters oh uh, no eight quarters that's amazing you put it into eighths the quarter folded in half and then you can fold each of the eighths to make your sixteenths what I found the easiest way to do it is fold a quarter to a quarter and then pleat it and then the same again a quarter to a quarter and then pleat it and go all the way around that way rather than trying to bring the fold right across um, because you get a more even fold that way and then you want to mark your circle are we coming down here I'm coming down to the bit lower down now Want to mark your circle just by eye roughly where you want to cut your cogs down to so you have a point to cut down into now bearing in mind this is your template so you can alter it as you as you wish So each pleat or each fold you need to do an angle so that you get your um, why do I need a protractor no sorry I mean compass that's a joke from previous um, I couldn't remember the name of the, the thing I would, I would do, I'm suggesting that instead of doing it by eye you could actually do it properly with a, a compass it is done now it is done so I'm going to cut into a slant inwards then outwards inwards and then outwards so you have a shape that looks like this and then you can fold that down and do the next one or you can leave it up and then fold them all down afterwards but where you've done a slant you need to do the opposite slant so this is a, that slant so I need to go that way to make this wider and then that way then that way and then that way so you get into a bit of a rhythm going down Folding in your wider bits um, that's a wider bit and it leaves you your cogs spokes yeah your tines yeah your bits that grip on <laughs> if you leave these folded down then you could reverse it if you wanted to so you could bring one these up and these down if that makes sense so then you've got a different style 
X. That was that way, so that was this way. That's this way. That's this way. That's this way. That's this way. This way. That was that way, so that's going this way. Truth. In truth. Truth or time. The oracle has looked it up for me. So, we're folding on all the fatter ones. Turn that down. Turn that down. No, you stay up. You go down, you stay up. Okay, do as you're told. Okay, so we have something that looks a bit like this. Sorry, I was just looking at the PSOS.com and one of them actually is for gear wheel. A gear wheel, okay. It's a rag wheel. So if you make some out of old bits of cloth, you can make a rag wheel out of rags. Oh. <laughs> That's actually the future. Oh. Okay. Right, so then we then place it on our bit that needs to be doing. I'm going to do it on the back because it will show up better. So, and then we can draw our bits that we need to cut out onto our thing using the template. Hold it steady as you turn it so that you don't lose your place. You can measure it and making sure every tiny is um, even, but I'm going for the the grungy style, so I'm not worried if it doesn't completely match. And down, and down, and down, and down, and down, until you get to the other side. <laughs> and then bend them back, and you can snip them off. So, it's probably easier to fold it up and snip across. Fold it up and snip across. Be careful not to snip your bits, previous uh, your turrets, whatever the tines. total lot of mess that's good so where these little bit of red sh where these bits of red show that don't worry about them because we're going to be doing the same process that we did on the metal work on the tin foil so that that will be covered up with the dies So, them out of the way. I can't put them in the paper thing because I've got tinfoil all over them. I will put them in the rubbish in a minute. Let me clear the decks. So, you work your way through them. Um, I'm going to pause you a second. 
cut the rest of these out and I'll come back to you. See you in a minute. So again, we cut and brought you back. Um, I have done all the cutting out of my little segments now. Um, and as you can see, we've got a nice selection to work with. I'm going to put these to one side for the moment because I'm going to work on the silver. Now, the silver's a bit too shiny for me at the moment. So, we want to get some of this grungy stuff here and add some ink and grunge it up to be more like this one. So, I'm going to put another. Have I got another? Yeah, I've got another bit of paper underneath here because I don't really want to ink up my my mat underneath. Um, so we're going to drip. In no particular pattern. <laughs> well, it wasn't intentional. Maybe that's how I felt. Happy, 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 happy. <sighs> so, and then I put my my yellow on. It will dry a little duller, so it's quite bright at the moment, but it will dry, dry a little duller. And I've got a little bit of blue around the edges as well to just give a... That's where I've edged the, the sides and it's come over the top. Right, so put that on there. Then I'm going to very gently move the ink round with my paintbrush. So it gets all over. Try not to pick too much up at a time because I don't want to. Move it round too much. That's it. So it spreads it all the way round rather than having it in blotches. And it also mixes it so it gives it a, t a tonal effect. Just dabbing the brush, picking up a little bit and dabbing it back down again so it makes it nice and even. There we go. Nice and shiny. Now this one's got beautiful turquoise there. Did I mention that's my favourite colour? I think I might have done once or twice. that all nicely and then we can concentrate on the other ones while these are drying and the last one on this bit anyway yeah whether whether it um blend it's quite some other beautiful tonal colors with it and that's given you a nice little watermark sort of bit there. It's fun. These are all backgrounds still at the moment. Um, and as I say, layers, layers, layers. Which will, you know... So now, who would have thunk that started off as a bit of kitchen roll? Uh, kitchen silver foil. Beautiful. Just going to get the ink off my brush. Um, I think the brush will stain, but it, it won't affect. So. Pop them back. I think I'm finished with them now for the minute. So we're going to pop them up on the corner there to dry. Move you over. And then 
the last few minutes we're going to spend working on stenciling for these. So, we need a quite a dark colour for our stencil because otherwise it's not going to show up. But I'm going to do a mixture of dots and I'm not sure what this pattern's called but this pattern on some and dots on others. Now I'm trying to think what colour would be best out my inks. Tree of life? I don't know. Not quite. No, no, it's sort of windowish. Mm. What other inks? I've got those three. Where's the other ones gone? Ooh. That nearly went on the floor. That one. Oh. I buried them on the I buried my other inks underneath my um, guillotine hole thingy um, paper cutter. That's the one. Right, so I've got a couple of browns here. Chocolate chip. That might be nice. That might be nice and dark. And oops, sorry about the noise, folks. Um, we don't want to introduce too many more colours, so I want it bright, but I also want it muted and let, um, so we don't want orange, we don't want, have I got a purple, I don't think I've got a, I don't think I've got a purple ink, oh yes I have, yes I have, right, so we're going to go for chocolate chip, sounds good. order me one for later right and we're going to vary it so I might put the lavender on the pink with the dots and then the chocolate chip on the green with the other stencil and vary it round so try and fight with this to open this again Would you please do the honours, Peter, because these things defy logic. I swear they do. I'll try and push it along, but it was wrong. Oh, got it. I got it. I got it. Got it. Yay. There we go. They are a bit stiff, yes. Right. I'll try not to put my elbow in them. And I had a Timu order come through this afternoon. And I got myself some little finger dobbers. And they're quite fun. So you pop your finger in and you call it Fred. Hello Fred, are you going to help me with the inky? Yes, I am, I am. And then you stick his nose in the ink. Right, silliness over. And see if we can show this ink I don't know if this ink's going to show on the pink but we'll have a go no it's not really showing up let's try it on this color lighter color and see we might have to go to the chocolate brown on that one or it may be just my ink daub has not got enough ink on it Yeah, this one's working. Doesn't have to be a major difference, just subtleties at this stage because we're, yeah. So this is, you can see the, I if I can get myself in frame, you can see the dots on the, but it's not, um, in your face but they're there so that's that one so change me dauber and go chocolate brown and see if the chocolate brown will go on that and we'll try this other pattern 
Oh, springs on the floor. Oh, this one's a bit juicier. I'm just holding the stencil down with my fingers so it doesn't move around too much. If you're finding that it's bouncing around too much or moving around, then you can take the stencil down. But these are such small little items we're, we're doing. And you can go from different directions as well. Just dab it down. Ah, oh, that's much more the effect I was looking for. Bearing in mind this one also has been embossed, so that's why you've got the double double layers. So you can see that it, you, you lose certain angles, you can see just the squares, and then so you get interest all the way around. And that's all these other cogs are going to be embossed as well, and we'll do that in another episode. But I wanted to see how that will. I'm really happy with that one. Right. Well, maybe we should do them all chocolate instead of purple then, and just do the different things. Because I don't think that purple is going to show up very well. So I'll give that to you. We'll keep our chocolate dobber. Um, put that with that one. And we're going to go for. I'm going to use this pattern again on this one. Now I'm not sure how the ink's going to take on the nail varnish because remember some of these have been drawn um, coloured in with felt tip and some of them have been done with nail varnish and then we've got some with the uh, it's under the thing here again yeah. so that's that one and again, it's the difference between having it embossed and not being embossed is, you know, it's going to make a big difference. To, and we've got two different embossing folders so we can ring the changes with that as well. So this one, I'm going to do the dots on the green. not sure it's taking it very well because this is on nail polish so we might have to come in with something a bit more um, oh, I think it might be alright let it dry pick it up very carefully and let it dry Yes, it has it has marked it, but again, it's a subtle. I let that dry. Oh, running out of places to let things dry. Let's go over there. Let's try this chocolate blue. Uh, chocolate blue, blue with chocolate. That's what I meant to say. Oh yes, that's come up beautiful. And this has got a little bit of sparkle in it as well because I tried some of the sparkly ink on this and you just get a little, well, catch the light with it a little bit. Put that down there. So how many have we done? Two and two. So I'll do another one of this and another couple of that and then we'll see if we can do anything on the metal ones, the, the tinfoil ones. So. Have a little 
go here. Yep, and again that one's come up beautifully. Now we're going to switch over. Um, the stencils can be just wiped off with a damp cloth. So um, a baby wipe or just a damp tea towel or whatever. So I'm going to do this pattern on the turquoise. Turquoise and brown I think go beautifully together anyway. As do turquoise and orange. Okay. I'm biased because it's my favourite colour but I think turquoise goes with everything so I'm finding these finger dobbers really really nice to use you can get a, more of a precise action and you, your other bit of the dobber is not in your way that's come out lovely as well yeah I'm really happy with that okay and this one was done, but it's not done very bright, so I'm going to go back over that. You might get some undertones with it, but I don't think it's going to show up very well anyway, so we might as well keep on with the chocolate theme. Chocolate lines. Mm. They're all gone. Okay, so that's those stencils. Now we want to bring these down and see. I don't think I can try it. The chocolate brown and see if it will use a touch dry. Yep. Yeah. Difficult to tell. I've got I have to try a different finger each time now because um, my fingers are so inky. I'm not sure whether it's already there or whether it's come off the ink, um, off the um, shape. All right, once again, I think these will go on, but they will take some drying. So we've got to allow them time to dry. So I'm going to pop this shape on two of them. I'm not sure what we're calling this, stained windows or something. And hold it at the edges. That's it. And because the tin foil has got its own natural little embossing, it's it's going to be triple patterns on this these ones. Right. So I've got two small and two big. So I'll do this pattern on the big one because it's a bigger pattern. And then so all we're doing at the moment is building up our elements to fit into our collage our 3d collage um, and then we can work out what will sit where you might not want to use all of the elements in the end, but they're they're available. Right, last but not least, these two. Now I can put them together and stencil across. Save a bit of time. Here we go. Holding it down as we go, all being all the bits that show through the stencil. Doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be heavy ink to so say it's all background at the moment. Okay, Ooh, stuck to my finger. So do me dober. Hand that over to you, sir. I will show these ones off.
so that's it for today we will come back once these are all nice and dry and have a bit of a play with the die cutting machine with um, our embossing folders so much love bye bye for now see you in the next one